I decrease. May the words you have given me for this message be seeds that rest in our hearts that we might bear fruit for you here on earth. May I be bold and courageous in speaking what it is you have given me to speak. And may we have, may we have ears that hear. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I remember as a young man in the 70s, one of my favorite snacks was Cracker Jacks. Y'all like Cracker Jacks? Does anybody still eat Cracker Jacks? You guys still eat Cracker Jacks? There was a commercial on TV. Jack Guilford was the father, and he was sitting in a chair, and he was reading his newspaper, and he had a box of Cracker Jacks, and he was eating the Cracker Jacks. It was a big box of Cracker Jacks. And his son comes home from school. And Jack does everything. His son walks in the door and says, I'm home. I'm home. Back in the days when everything was safe and good. Dad's sitting there reading the paper, eating the Cracker Jacks. And he immediately looks at his Cracker Jacks. And he begins to wrap them up in the paper. Because he does not want his son to see the Cracker Jacks. Right? And his son comes obediently. He walks over to the to the to Jack's, to the father's chair and he stands next to the father's chair and his father just like a good dad does looks at his son and says what did you learn in school today and the little boy with big eyes looking at the Cracker Jacks said sharing <laughs> <laughs> and he fidgeted around in the chair a little more and Jack kind of the father picked, made his new paper cover up the Cracker Jacks a little more. He says, what did you learn in school today? And he said, sharing, <laughs> looking at the Cracker Jacks. Isn't that a great thought? One of the most important lessons in our lives, we learn by watching a Cracker Jack commercial. But really one of the most important lessons we learn is by watching Jesus. We watch Jesus and what Jesus does, and that shapes and forms our faith for us. I craved Cracker Jacks all the time when I was a young boy. And I quoted that, what did you learn in school today? When somebody else had some, I would quote that all the time. Sharing. I'd go to the movies with my friends. We'd sit in there and they'd have Cracker Jacks. I wouldn't have any. What did you learn in school today? Sharing. And we'd laugh and giggle and I'd get some Cracker Jacks, right? Well, what about when we look at Jesus? What about when we learn that we, have a, we hear that we have a God who gives unto us? A God who sustains us. A God who works with us and heals us and loves us. Do we really believe that? Do we really believe in our faith so deeply that we know God will provide? That we know that whatever the situation is, God's going to provide. Or are we so desperate in our lives that we put things on our shoulders and we think we have to be the person of provision? We have to be the person who creates our own healing, creates our own opportunities. You see, today we find Jesus trying to get away from the crowds. Trying to go to the other side of the sea. To be alone. To be alone with his disciples so he can teach and he can love on them. They've, they've been out, they've been ministering, and he needs to love on them. But what happens again? We heard about it a couple weeks ago. What happens again? The crowds follow Jesus. Why? This is the biggest question in this text you need to pay attention to. Why are the crowds following Jesus? Because they have seen the miraculous works he has done. Get it? They have seen the show. And they want it for themselves. They don't want to believe. They just want to be healed. They just want what's good for them. My brother's sick. Here's my brother healing. Right? My sister's sick. Here's my sister healer. It's not that they want to have faith and they want to walk with Jesus. What they want to do is they want to grab the goods. How many of us walk through life wanting to grab the goods? We believe in Jesus because we can get something from it. Is that what it's about? Is that what it's really about in our relationship with the Christ? That we get something about it? We get to live in heaven where there's gold streets and mansions? We get to walk through the pearly gates and we get to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. So we can get it? Are we about relationship? Are we about genuine relationship with the Christ who makes us a better person? 
A better person who can give to others because it's been given unto us. Because we understand it's not about the goods. It's about lifting other people up. I love that the crowd's gathered. And can you imagine the apprehension that was going through the disciples? When Jesus turned to Philip and he said, hey, Philip, where can we buy enough bread? Where can we buy enough bread? And Philip's going, oh, God. Were you ever in the, the one in the classroom where the teacher asked the question? And you're going, please don't call on me. Please don't call on me. Please don't call on me. Right? Lord, please don't call on me today. Right? I don't have the answer. Hey, Philip, let me just put you on the spot. Where can we buy enough bread? They're across the lake, right? The Sea of Galilee, they're across it. And they're sitting on a mountaintop. There's not some little convenience store on the corner. Where can we go to the market and buy enough bread to feed 5,000 men? And we're not talking about just 5,000 people. You do understand that, right? In biblical writings in ancient times, women and children weren't recognized in writings. So when they did a head count, they talked about the crowds, it was 5,000 men. Now, they may have had their wives and their children with them. So think about that number. 5,000 men gathered. 5,000 people and plus gathered. And Jesus points one disciple and says to him, where? He tests his faith right there. Where can we get enough bread to feed these people? Jesus ever asked you that? How are you going to handle that situation? How are you going to deal with your brother who sinned against you? How are you going to do with your, deal with your spouse? How are you going to deal with your children? What are you going to do to make things right? What are you? See, that's what he's asking Philip. Philip, what are you going to do to fix this situation? <coughs> um, 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 um. Right? One time I was called on in class, you know, in a little situation. Lord, don't call on me. Don't call on me. I don't know the answer. College professors calls on me, asks me a question point blank. Biology 101. And I wasn't there for biology 101. I was just there to get the credit and get out of there, right? Barry, blah, 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 blah. And I pontificated this answer. It was a wonderful line of, you know what? <laughs> Spread out, trying to impress the class. And here's what he said to me after I finished my eloquent response. So, Barry, and he asked me the question again. Because I didn't have the answer. And neither did Philip. Philip said, eight months wages wouldn't buy enough for these people to even have one buy. What was Philip's vision? On his self, wasn't it? On human capabilities. On human capacity. Do we walk through life Visioning the world and our struggles in the world through human capacity, through human eyes? Or are we really people of faith who believe in a God who will see what the situation is before we even realize what the situation is? The crowd gathered on the mountain. It doesn't say Jesus had compassion on them. He turned to Philip and said, how are we going to feed them? He knew they were coming because they wanted the miracles. He knew they were wanting to be healed. But he needed to take care of them first. That's our God. Our God wants to get our basic core needs taken care of because we're God's people. Jesus saw the need before the people ever said, Man, my stomach's growling. Can we go to McDonald's? Jesus saw that. And he wanted to take care of the people because hospitality in ancient times was the greatest gift you could offer somebody. Hospitality was the greatest gift of honor that you could give somebody when they came to visit. And Jesus had 5,000 men plus everybody else that walked with them coming to be his guest on the mountainside. And his first care was for those who were coming, for his guests. But he had it, I love it, he says, he had it in mind what he was going to do. He already knew. God knows God's going to take care of us. We just have to believe in that. We have to believe that we encounter the Christ. When we come to the Christ, the Christ is going to take care of us. But he's not going to let us just sit there. Because he called Philip out. What are we going to do? And Philip didn't have the correct answer. But Andrew, now this is why Andrew's my favorite disciple. 
Barry, Andrew, love him, right? And this is why Andrew's my favorite disciple. Jesus. There's a little boy here who has five loaves and two fish. Very, I mean, think about the crowd and think about what's in this little boy's basket that his mom made him before he went to go off with dad for the day. Right? Mama, you going to make sure your boy's going to eat? Dad may too be, be too busy chasing whatever dad's chasing, but mama's going to make sure that her boy's going to eat. So she packed him a basket that had five loaves and two fish in it. And that was intended for him and his daddy. Right? And Andrew says, Lord, this is all we have. This is all we have. How many of you are willing to look at what you have and give it to God? Or do you say, I don't speak clearly. I don't have enough degrees. I'm not wealthy enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not cute enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not slender enough. How many excuses do we have? That we don't allow God to work in our lives because we limit ourselves just like Philip did. With our human understanding, we forget that we serve a God who is massive. A God who is great. A God who is predestined that all of us will be in relationship because God created us. And that God is going to take care of us as God sees us as God's guests. I love this. He turns to his disciples and he doesn't give them a hard task. Have them sit down. Make yourselves at home. Be comfortable. Hospitality after hospitality after hospitality. Jesus loves creation. Jesus loves humanity. Jesus understands what it means to love others. Come, sit down. You're hungry, we'll have food for you. And here's the most important part of this text. He takes what's been given to him. Five loaves, two fish, a little boy's picnic lunch. And he gives thanks. The Greek word is eucharizo. Eucharizo. Does that sound familiar? This is the Eucharist. The body of Christ that we break is known as the Eucharist. It's the same Greek word that we use at the table every week. Eucharizo. And it means the body of Christ. Giving thanks. He takes what's given to him and returns it back to the Creator in thankful spirit. How many of us do that? Or how many of us say, man, I wish I had a little more. That was good, give me a second helping. Oh God, I don't have that, I want that. We look at our brother, we look at our sister, they have something we want. I mean, there's lots of lives that have been wrecked because we're seeking to get what our brother or sister has. And we've forgotten that if we look at God, God will give us plentiful. God will give us all we need for the journey. That our God, if we'll just give thanks for what we have, five loaves, two fish, seven hours, and God will multiply that in our lives. Have them sit down. Pass the bread out until they have what? You only get one bite of bread. Is that what he said? Okay, men, you get two bites of bread. Women, you get one. And kids, y'all only get a dinner. Is that what he said? He said, he gave thanks to God, and then he told his disciples, pass it out to the people who are gathered and let them have, what did he say? All they want. How many of you seek God like that? God has all you want. God will give you all you want. Think about that. God will give you all you want if you ask in the name of God. God will give to you. God has generous proportions for you if you want that. The problem is most of us don't want God's portion. We want our portion. The one we design. We think what's going to make us happy, that's our portion. What's going to make us happy, that's our portion. Right? 
Man, we think if we can just achieve this, that's our portion. First day we were standing out there in the water fishing. It just seemed a little awkward. We were catching fish, but this question kept coming up. How many have you caught? How many have you caught? How many have you caught? I don't know. I quit counting. The harvest was so plentiful you couldn't count. But there had to be a competition because there were three men standing in the water fishing. And we had to know who was the best. Our portion, right? Our portion. We had decided, you know, it qualified me. I'm a better fly fisherman than you because I caught more fish. Bull. It doesn't matter how many fish we caught. What mattered was we were standing in the midst of God's creation, three men who love one another as brothers, even though we're not from biological relations. And we were unified in what we were doing, and the blessing was upon us. And God wanted us to have as much of that blessing as we wanted if we turned our focus on God. If we gave thanks to God for being in God's creation, if we gave thanks to God for the numerous fish we caught, if we gave thanks to God for the laughter and the love and the time we spent together, how many of us do that? The, it was the best trip. We've gone on trips for over five years now, six years. And it was the best trip ever because we kept turning it back to giving thanks to God for the moments. We laughed, we cried, we laughed, we laughed, we laughed, we ate and ate and ate, and we fished till our arms fell off almost. And all of us came home joyous. Because God had pressed it down and poured it out and given back to us. The same thing that happened on the mountain that day. God took seven items of food. Please hear that number. God took seven items, the number of perfection, and he gave it to the people. All you want. You know, I was raised where you didn't take... The last spoonful of any dish on the plate that was served, right? I mean, like if the potatoes came by and I wanted one more scoop of mashed potatoes. If there was only one scoop of mashed potatoes left in that plate, I couldn't take it. I was just taught that. That was manners. That was polite. Because somebody at the table might need that, right? God doesn't work like that. God says, take it and I'll fill the bowl back up. Take it in, I'll fill the bowl back up. Help yourself to all the enormity that God can give you, all the grandeur that God can give you, all the passion that God can give you, all the love and forgiveness and grace that God can give you. Use it up. Because when you turn around and ask for more, it's going to be right there. Give witness about what God does in your life, and God will give you more things to witness about. I've got story after story after story that I can tell you where God showed up this weekend or this past week. In huge ways to three men who were not heading around in the mountains. Just being guys and being silly. But God showed up and showed up and showed up and showed up and showed up just like in your lives. If we continually give thanks, God will multiply the blessing. Eat all you want. Do you know those guys ate? I know, I'm looking around here every day. About 1.30, we'd take a break for brunch. We'd start at 6.30 in the morning, fish till about 1.30. Then we'd take a break for brunch. Pull out the Blackstone, we'd fix brunch and eat. And then you know what we had to do? Take a nap. <laughs> Man, we had worked hard for those fish. And oh, then we were satisfied. Good home cooking, no fast food. It was all good right there on the Blackstone Grill, outside in the mountain air. And we each had our favorite spot to sleep. We had eaten, clean up, and I mean, it was like all of a sudden somebody disappeared and somebody else <laughs> disappeared. Boom! You're looking for your fridge, like, where did we go? <laughs> Guess it's nap time. <laughs> and it became a habit, real fast, because we were satisfied. Jesus made sure everybody on that hill was satisfied. Everybody who partake, partake of what Jesus has to offer was satisfied. Filled to contentment. That's what happens when you have to take a nap after you eat. Because you filled your body to contentment and it needs to rest. You flooded your body and it needs to rest to digest your food. It needs you to rest so you can digest your food. Same way with Jesus. Eat all you want. Give them all they want. 
And they did. And here's the great thing. See, Jesus, Jesus is kind of a smart aleck. Did y'all know that? You really studied Jesus' character? He's kind of a smart aleck. Because he says to them this. Hey, guys, let's don't waste any of this food. Y'all go pick it up, all right? Y'all go pick up the leftovers. We don't want to have any leftovers. We don't want to have anybody, you know, leaving food on the ground. He was good for eco. You know, he was all about being green and making sure everything was cleaned up. Right? That was our Jesus. He's the one who created leftovers. He gathered up all the fish and bread that was left. Twelve baskets. Twelve baskets. The disciples gathered. You know what that resembles? The tribes of Israel in creation. Twelve baskets. The twelve disciples. Twelve apostles. Twelve. The number of completeness. The number of wholeness. The number that includes everybody. That's how much was left over. That's how much God has to pour out to us. God pours out so much to us that we have enough left over that we can share it with anybody we encounter. That's the kind of God we serve. The God who loves us enough, who sees us at a distance coming to them and knows our need. And multiplies our needs so much that we become content. That we become satisfied. And if we become satisfied, there's enough left over in that provision that we can share with others. That we can share with others. What's your relationship with God look like? What's your relationship with God look like? Are you willing to give unto God, to let God see you as you are and know your needs? So that God can reach out to you and meet your needs and multiply those needs in your life so greatly. That you have it pouring out of you? That you have it just oozing out of you? That it just pours out wherever you go? One of my friends is a smaller statue. The two of us are, I'm 6'4", and my other buddy's 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, and we have a friend that's about 5'10". And he's a great guy. And I watched him walk into this little country store. And there was a group of ladies. The men were out fishing. And the ladies were in there. It had a big souvenir section. And they were all in there. I'm going to just say the term we used, okay? And it's a term of endearment. They were cackling about themselves, right? And they were talking about all they were going to buy for their grandkids and their friends. And they were just going through everything. And we said that all in love. My friend had so much oozing out of him, he just blended in with them. I mean, he started talking to him, and I'm kind of like, I'm going outside sit on the front porch. It was too much for me. Pretty soon, my big tall friend, he came back out there, and he sat on the front porch with me. But our other friend, he just was right in the midst of him. And he just went to visiting and talking and learning about him and sharing with him and loving on him. And I'm like, you are a witness unto God, my friend. You have a gift of grace and patience that nobody can match. <laughs> I mean, he just, and he stood in line while they all checked out ahead of him and he had some behind him and they were all talking about their grandkids and what they, oh. but not him. What did you learn in school today? Sharing. What did we learn in church today? Sharing. God wants nothing more than to share with you so that you can share with others. There is an abundance of God's love for all people. Go. Go into the world and show them what you've learned. Show them that you know how to share. Amen.